Hey guys, it's been a little while since I uh, posted anything, so I decided to get back in the swing of things after being busy with a bunch of other things. Hopefully that won't happen again for a little while. I have a couple of things coming up for you guys. You can let me know what you think. Um, I decided to start out with a creepypasta. Specifically, I'm going to be doing game-related creepypastas. We're going to start off with a Pokemon one. Yay! Something's not a review. Well, it kind of, sort of, isn't a review. I don't know. Maybe I lied. Maybe it is a review. I don't know. We'll find out at the end of this. Anyway, we're going to start off with Pokemon Strangled Rat. I haven't seen anybody majorly tackle this one. I've seen readings of it, but no real... I guess, analysis of it. Uh, I've seen a few that attempted, but <laughs> we'll see if we can't do a little bit better job here. If you guys have any suggestions of other creepypasta that you would like me to take a look at, let me know. But basically the rules for this is I'm going to be looking at um, how well the author did, how we do a creepypasta that isn't really shitty, but something that's decent, since Yuri of Wind's already tackling the ones that are shitty, so I don't want to copy him. And we'll go from there. I'm probably not going to do too many in a row of the same type of theme, but they will be all game-related, whether they are Pokemon or not. Alright, and without further ado, we get started. There are tons of stories out there about hacked Pokemon games. Some of them are really quite neat, such as that one ver where about a version where you get a ghost as a starter. Some are ridiculous as well, silly stories about people dying after playing a game or the game talking to them. God, don't these writers know less is more when it comes to this stuff? Ah, well, I digress. I grew interested in these hack games that are apparently in any thrift shop, on eBay, or handed out by homeless people to random passerby. I didn't have the pleasure of meeting these creepy people. I merely found this particular cartridge in a trash bin when the garbage truck backed into my neighbor's dumpster. I noticed the game and asked the trash man if I could take it. He didn't seem to mind. It was thrown away, after all. I, of course, checked with my neighbor to confirm that they actually didn't want it, though they seemed perplexed, as if they've never seen it in their life. Their sub made a grab for it. A little boy who saw the Charizard on the cover crying out, Pokemon, I want money! But his mother told him no, seeing as I found it. He didn't even have a Game Boy anyway, he just liked Pokemon. Thinking nothing more, I simply went home. Looking at the cartridge's sticker on the way, just a plain old red version, sticker slightly torn across Charizard's neck. But that was to be expected with such an old game. I had the blue version as a kid, so I was a bit eager to see the, albeit minimal, differences red version had. I was rather disappointed by what I saw when the title screen showed up. Pokemon, strangled red version. Well, damn it, it was a hack. Hacks are neat and all, but they have zero monetary value. The original's quite valuable by now. And I wanted to play red anyway, not this crap. Oh well, it was free. Might as well try it. The name was odd, however. Strangled red? That made no sense. Not even a, in a morbid description of one being asphyxiated, as people turn blue when choking, not red. Who knows, maybe there was a pair of these hacks, and I just got the red one. The more I thought about this, the more interested I became. My initial disappointment turned into curiosity. I wanted to know what the creator had made. And I was going to know everything I saw. The first oddity I noticed at the start screen had a Charizard next to the trainer instead of a Charmander. Also, the Pokemon never cycled through like the original versions did. It just stayed Charizard. After about five minutes of waiting, shrugging, I hit start, noticing there was no cry as the Charizard, uh, no cry Charizard as I did, and there was supposed to be. I saw that there was a continue option, 
So I figured I'd do what everybody else did and use games and see what the previous owner had done. No. I blinked in surprise. No. What do you mean, no? The game didn't let me continue no matter what. Though on the fourth attempt, I heard the Charizard cry, quiet, barely audible, but there. Shrugging it off, I decided to hit new game like I would have done after checking the old file anyway. The screen cut the black for a while. No Professor Oak, no starting theme, just nothing at all. Eventually, the screen came back, showing a bedroom, two beds, two TVs, and a computer in the corner. My trainer sprite was the usual one, consisting, consistent with the original red version. I was curious as to why it didn't ask my name. Though, that was answered when I opened the pause menu, noticing my trainer was named Steven. No, this isn't my real name or some stupid crap like that. This game isn't self-aware or haunted. At least not that I know of. It just had a name chosen already. Curious, I saw that he had the starter amount of money. No badges. He did look, didn't look like Red, though. His hair was longer, almost reaching halfway down his back. Red's usual smile replaced with a confident smirk. Honestly, I found this spy much cooler than Red. Next, I tracked down his Pokemon. A single Charmander, level 5, named Mickey. Nothing odd about it, or should I say her, with the name and all. She had the beginning Charizard stats, only new scratch, tail whip, basic stuff. The game seemed relatively normal. Returning to the game, I walked about the room, noticing Steven's long hair was present on the back of my trainer sprite when my back was turned to the camera. I didn't recognize the house, but I descended the stairs to see more. Downstairs, there was another trainer who spoke to me the instant I came down. Mike, ready yet? Steven, yeah. I assumed this Mike was my rival, predecided for me, a replacement for Blue, most likely. Though I thought back to the bedroom having two beds and realized they weren't just rivals, they were brothers. They talked back and forth, basic Pokemon dialogue, becoming a master, kissing your mall, stuff like that, before having a little argument over which was better, Charmander or Squirtle. Which, of course, led to the intro battle, like the one versus Blue in the lab. Simple enough, scratch tackle, scratch tackle, till I won purely for having the first turn. I took note of how much better Steven's sprite looked in combat than Red's. Different pose, the hair looked almost like it was blowing in the wind. A brief, minor upgrade, but still much nicer. I left the house after some banter with my brother, stepping out of the Palatown theme. Going east, I found it was indeed Pallet Town. The house was simply on the outskirts to the west. I noted there was no mysterious grass field like in normal Pallet Town. Wandering about, I decided to check on Red's home. His mother was inside, and when I talked to her, she commented about how handsome Stephen looked, hoping her son would look up to him as a role model for when he became a trainer himself next year. Which, of course, led me to realize that this game took place a year before the original Pokemon. Red was even upstairs playing his SNES in his room, commenting, I'm going to be the best, too, when it's my turn. I was starting to like this act. It was interesting. A completely new adventure. A different character. Hell, Steven even seemed to have history with the people in his town. A reputation, a personality beyond the silent protagonist. The people in town talked to, me, talked to him as a person, in conversation, not just outing tutorial crap. Even Blue's sister had new dialogue. They seemed to be in a relationship, too, as the dialogue ended with a kiss and a heart over him. Professor Oak simply wished me well, giving me a Pokédex to aid my adventure. He wasn't giving it to me to be the reason behind the adventure like every other Pokémon game out there. He gave it to me out of kindness, something to help me along the way, a gift. I was liking this more and more every second. 
The game seemed to have an actual story now. I was somebody, not just the cookie cutter protagonist anybody could be, not some blank sheet that could be replaced without notice. The story was different though, the actual gameplay remained unchanged. I went north like I was supposed to, went from town to town, collected badges, received the praise of leaders. Steven's fame seemed to, uh, to spread as some NPCs would talk to him like they knew him. <clears throat> I used Mickey in it for every battle, and she was growing surprisingly fast. She handled Brock with ease, even pounded Misty with no trouble at all. She wasn't as adversely affected by super effective attacks as others. Did more damage than the regular Charmander. She was a veritable powerhouse. She even became a Charizard at the mere level of 25. Not bad at all, I must say. Things started to get weird, though, as soon as they reached Lavender Town. I know, I know, Lavender Town is the focus behind every creepy story and the like, but it was the only place that it, where there was a notable difference. There was no Team Rocket Invasion, which I found on, but I did remember that it was a year in the past, so the invasion wouldn't occur until Red's time. I tried to enter the Pokemon Tower, aiming to get a Ghastly. That's when I got out. Steven, I have no reason to be here. Steven wouldn't go into the Pokemon Tower no matter what I did. This was weird. I mean, hell, there are a million places in Kanto you really don't have a need to be. Little random houses with nothing but children, NPCs, for example. Why was it here that Steven wouldn't enter? With a shrug, I figured I wouldn't need a gas leasing as Mickey could handle anything. So I simply went on my way, Lavender Town serving no purpose other than a passageway with a Pokemon Center. The game progressed normally from there. The remaining gems found, and eventually I made my way to the Elite Four and defeated them. As with Blue, my brother Mike was there before me, initiating the championship battle. Which Mickey swept with ease. The aftermath of the b battle was quite pleasant. None of that tension that was present between Red and Blue at the end of their match. The brothers congratulated each other on their progress, shook hands before the screen went to white. No Hall of Fame, nor any credits. When the screen came back, it was at the house again. The two brothers sitting at the computer, conversing with each other. Steven, I don't want to. Mike, come on, I just gotta borrow her for a second to finish the Pokédex. The entry won't register unless she recognizes me as a master for just a second. Steven, but she's my Mickey. Mike, I promise I'll give her back, come on, please. Yes or no? I was a bit perplexed, so I had no to be cautious. Mike, come on, please. No. Mike. Come on, please. I realized that this was simply continuing to loop until I hit yes. So I did, just to see what would happen. Mike. All right. This will just take a sec. Then we'll both be Pokemon Masters. Steven. Dot, dot, dot. The screen changed to the animation shown between two people when they trade Pokemon. Which I found a bit weird since I was solo, but whatever. This was apparently supposed to happen. Mike went first. I watched lazily. Or Mickey went first, excuse me. Watched lazily. She began to travel down the trading to. Snap! That made me jump. That sudden noise resonating in the silence of my bedroom. Loud due to the volume being way up. Looking at the screen, I noticed the game seemed to freeze. Mickey's still in mid-trade. But the game wasn't doing anything. With a sigh, I turned off the game, wondering what my last save was. When the game turned back on, I stared for a moment at the start screen. There was no Charizard next to the trainer. Mom pressing start, I saw the new game option was absent, leaving only continue. 
This was strange, to say the least. So I selected it, the game starting without even showing me my stats, as usual. My jaw dropped when I was greeted with one year later. The Lavender Town theme came first, playing its normal way, the screen slowly fading in from blackness. Steven was in the Pokemon Tower, which made the music even stranger, seeing as the Pokemon Tower had its own theme. He was standing in front of the tombs I used to, bleh, tombstone, not doing anything. Run, wondering what was going on, I pressed A. Steven, dot, dot, dot. Confused, I tried walking, realizing I was indeed in control at the moment. I brought up the pause menu and checked my party. Mickey was gone. Not just Mickey. All Pokemon. He had nothing. The Pokedex was absent from the menu. His bag was empty. Honestly concerned now, I checked his trainer card. He had no money, no badges. His playtime was 8,795 which was impossible as I only had 30 hours logged in before. But that wasn't the strangest part. His picture, the picture of the handsome, confident young trainer was different. His eyes were blank, his face turned down slightly. The smirk of his was gone, replaced with a, a lack of expression at all. That long hair of his, before in a perfect perm, now messy and gun count. I couldn't look at him anymore, closing the menu. I went to move out of the tower, but every step I took away from the tombstone, the screen flickered, like it did when the Pokemon was poisoned. Gulping, I brought back up the trainer card again. His picture was getting worse. Every step I took, his head hung more and more. His shoulders slumped. He bent over. By the time I exited the tower, he was on his knees, hands in it to his face, hair draped across him. I guessed already what was going on, but this clinched it. I began to put some things together in my mind. I had always wondered why there was no champion in the original games besides your rival. Why is it that you, the protagonist, had to beat your rival? When he just waltzed in, no previous champion to challenge. Then it struck me. The answer was right here. The previous champion gave up. His precious Mickey had apparently died, and with her, so died a part of him. His Pokédex, the other Pokémon, his badges, his fame, all of it, he threw it away. In that year that I missed, the year where all those hours came from, I even did the math, there are 8,765 hours in a year, add that to my 30, from before and it matched up. Even so, the game kept going. This should have been the ending, I thought. I mean, what else was there to do? I had no Pokédex, no Pokémon, not anything. What was I supposed to be doing? I talked to everyone in town, but they all said similar things. Are you okay? Still morning, I see. Everything will be all right. Please, is there anything we can do? Steven never replied to them. And they all simply said these same things over and over. I couldn't put the game down now. This was also strange. Curious, I headed off into the tall grass and eventually got into a battle with Radita. No Pokemon was set out, just Steven Sprite. I was wondering how I'd battle. While Radita left to be. The battle ended without anything happening. This was certainly interesting, and it happened with every other Pokemon I encountered. Wild Pidgey ignored you. Wild Ponyta wandered off. The music never changed either. No matter where I went, Lavender Town came from the speakers, following me, sometimes slowing down slightly, sometimes not. I searched everywhere, every town, talked to everybody, wondering just what the hell I needed to do. My frustration was mixing with uh, the depressing atmosphere of all this making the experience altogether unnerving and uncomfortable, but I couldn't tear myself away. I was starting to get a bit angry though. Nobody was telling me anything besides giving me their condolences and trying to give me items like lemonade or coffee. Each met with Steven. 
no. I slapped myself for idiocy, suddenly realizing how the likely answer was right in front of me. Pallet Town, of course. When I went there, though, which took a long time having to walk, no Pokemon to fly, no bicycle to ride, and Steven only seemed to move at half the regular speed of movement, it wasn't much different. I tried talking to Professor Oak. These things happen. You were just unlucky. Next I tried Blue's sister. Please, don't leave home again. Red's mom wouldn't even talk to me at all. There was nowhere else in mind to go. I walked to the west, finding the house from the beginning, which I had never entered since leaving Pallet Town. Inside was Mike, but talking to him was just as useless. Mike, I'm so sorry. I pondered for a moment if this was really the ending, Stephen doomed to do nothing but roam Canto and misery haunting by the memories forced to live in to everybody's concerns about him. As a last-ditch effort to do anything, I went to the bedroom and walked over to the bed. Stephen, I'm going to sleep. The screen faded to black for a moment, but then slowly faded back in, the world having a black tint to it, and Mike's sprite lying on the other bed, assuming I assumed it meant it was night. Stephen, I'm going to do it. Do what? Again, I had no idea. Tried inspecting everything in the room, nothing happened. As soon as I left the house, another dialogue. Steven, it can bring her back. It can do anything. What the hell is it? Something that could do anything? I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. Running around, I tried to leave Pallet Town the usual way. Steven, not that way. He wouldn't go any further. Tried the homes. Steven, screw them. I quirked an eyebrow at that, forgetting for a moment that this was not a real Pokemon game. The vulgarity just took me off guard. I continued to look around, but there was nowhere I could go until I accidentally stepped onto the ocean. Steven walked right in, only the upper, upper half of his sprite visible, like the swimmers you encounter at Cerulean Gym. I didn't know he could swim. Steven, the missing one. Missing one? paused for a moment. No, he couldn't possibly mean that. I hadn't tried the missing no trick on this hack yet, but it just fit too well. That had to be what he meant, so I surfed all the way to Cinnabar. I began to feel surprising uh, something was off. More so than it already was. Silence. The Lavender Town theme had stopped. There was no noise at all, nor were there any Pokemon. I just kept going, finding Cinnabar and surfing up and down the East Coast. Lo and behold, Wild Missing No appeared. Steven, mine. Wild Missing No was caught. What the hell? Steven didn't do anything. He just committed that atrocity of broken data to join him. No, to become his possession, and it did. I was getting more and more disturbed by all this. Checking the start menu, I saw Missing No was not in my party, but instead an item making things even stranger. I checked the trainer card as well. Steven had his back to me, his long hair draped behind him, his hands in his pockets, nothing else. Remembering what he said at the start of this night, I realized what I had to do. I surfed to land, made my way northeast to where Lavender Town was. Along the way, I noticed all the trainers, oddly still out at this hour, wouldn't look at Steven, all of them turning when he passed. Even those that were normally static. I tried talking to one of the officers in the guardhouse type buildings. Just go. They all said the same thing. The one sent chills down my spine. Sometimes dead is best. My hands were sweating by this point. Steven was about to try the impossible, something some would see as a crime against nature which many of these people shared that opinion. I steal myself, it's just a game, and I was going to complete it. It took an eternity to reach Pokemon Tower, but I got there eventually. Taking a deep breath, I headed toward the tombstone, 
remembering which one, the image of Stephen standing before it was burned into my mind, after all. First I tried inspecting it. Stephen. Mickey. Nothing happened. Let it go if I opened the menu, selected missing note from my bag. Oak. Stephen, don't use it. I was reminded of when Professor Oak would magically tell you you couldn't use a key item somewhere, like when using a bicycle in a building. Though the message was this time different. Even worse, Stephen responded to it. Stephen, in a world that cheated me, why should I play fair? Stephen used it. Stephen obtained M at sign, number sign, dollar sign, exclamation. What in God's name did I attain? I couldn't tell you. Because the game took away my control. Without my input, Stephen began to leave the tower on his own. Walking single step by single step. The Lavender Town theme started again. As he left the tower and began the excruciatingly slow journey against my will, every time he crossed one of the borders where the music sh would change, it got progressively slower. And more and more disturbing. By the time he reached Cerulean City, it was a demonic rumbling. I just stared, watching him, trying to guess where he was heading, but it was getting more and more obvious. He was heading into Pallet Town. The music had all but stopped when he got there, playing single note by single note. He went exactly where I guessed, right to his own house, inside, up the stairs. At this point, there was no music. Steven moved step by step, stopping in his brother's bed, turning to face him. At first I thought the game froze. He didn't do anything. He simply stood there. And I couldn't move him. I did, however, find out that I could open the pause menu. I was terrified to look, but I couldn't stop myself. I selected his trainer card. There was a low growl noise, like a distorted Pokemon cry. Stephen was looking at me again, directly at the screen. He was hunched over, his bangs obscuring his face. His hair was wild and feathered out. Between his bangs, there wasn't even a face at all, just black. Two red eyes looking straight forward. A white grin contrasting the darkness. It wasn't all. His name was now S exclamation 3V3N. I couldn't look away. My eyes glued to his, not breaking contact for some time. My vision was getting blurry until I couldn't see very well. My face grew wet. I was crying like a baby. There was nothing I could do to hold back the tears. I was with this boy from the start. I built him up to greatness and was then forced to watch his decline after a tragic accident. And now this, this thing, this abomination, I watched him go insane. Halting my tears, wiping my eyes, I closed out of the trainer card and tried to save the game. Just wanting to quit. The game informed me that that was impossible. Nothing can be saved now. The pause menu wouldn't close no matter what I did. So I had no other option. I checked the bag. Nothing happened. I checked the Pokemon. There was one. A, string, a single sprite met me. It had zero HP. Its status... D-E-D. -E its name, M, at sign, number sign, dollar sign. I selected it. I was greeted with four options. Status, it's her. Switch, never. Close, no. Strangle. My fingers shaking, I selected strangle. The menu closed, showing Steven in the room again. Stephen, goodbye. Snap! The game shut itself off. I was more dumbfounded than frightened. In a bit of shock, I turned it back on. The tell screen showing the maniac Stephen and a horribly glitched Charizard. I pressed start and then continue. All I saw was a zoomed out pallet town showing Stephen's home to the west, tall grass surrounding it, those immovable stones blocking it from the rest of the town. 
The image completely static, no music, no movement, before fading to white and going back to the title screen. It was as it had been when I first popped it in, a trainer and a Charizard. I attempted to hit continue. No. Alright, that was a pretty long one, guys. But we'll have to get down to the analysis now. Yay! Yeah, excuse me for having issues with uh, reading there. I'm going to have to get a drink here. So I'm going to pause it and come back. And then we'll go right into the analysis. Alright guys, on to the analysis of the story we just read. Well, the first thing is this. Obviously this person does have some knowledge of Pokemon Red and Blue. They did mess up a couple of things. Obviously they were telling you that um, Charizard came about much faster than normal, which is fine, and it had a special edition stats, basically, where it wasn't being affected by, like, water as much, just like with uh, their statement about Misty. Um, one thing they did mess up on right away, though, was the fact that they said that uh, Charmander had Scratch and Tail Whip. Charmander does not have Tail Whip. He has Scratch and Growl, so they messed up there. But overall, pretty good story. Um... If somebody made a game out of this, it would definitely be a lot more interesting than the original games were. And I always did find it weird, just like that person said that there wasn't a previous champion that somehow blew this kind of waltzed right in. Which was, although odd, I guess you could believe that possibly he fought the other champion. But we have no background history on that. And perhaps the Pokemon games could do a retro type thing and go back and tell you some more without being quite as morbid as the story. Uh, another thing I found amusing with this man is the fact that he thought it was vulgar to say screw them. I don't know many of us would think that was vulgar, but it was quite interesting. Uh, different way of using missing no. <laughs> and funny way of using elite characters, though I'm not sure why Mickey had such weird characters since it's M-I-K-I. Shouldn't one of those been repeating? Like, if they were going to use the at sign for the I, it should have been at sign instead of dollar sign on the end there, so blew it on that. But anyway, they um, did a fairly decent job. Looking forward to doing some more of these stories, so let me know what your opinion of this one was, and if there's any suggestions of ones that you would like to see me do in the future that it, I could definitely research and look into. Um... I do plan on doing some more stories here shortly. Probably not another Pokemon right away. I'll probably be looking into a couple of the others. I'm sure there's going to be repeats because people do all kinds of game-related creepypasta. But uh, I'll try to stay away from anything that uh, has directly been done by someone I know. Anyway. Um, yep, that's basically all I got for now, guys. Let me know what you think, and even if you guys don't really care for this, that's fine. Just let me know. Oh, and I turned off my fan. I realized it after the recording session that it was a problem. So I guess I will uh, see you guys later. This was Phoenix, Silver Phoenix 777, signing out. Later, guys. All right, guys, on to the analysis of the story we just read. Well first thing is this. Obviously, this person does have some knowledge of Pokemon Red and Blue. They did mess up a couple of things. Obviously, they were telling you that um, Charizard came about much faster than normal, which is fine, and it had a special edition stats, basically, where it wasn't being affected by, like, water 